word. And I ask you to please just bless the next individual that comes up. In Jesus' name, amen. This thing's sliding right down here. Awesome. All right, it's going to take a little, I'm going to take a little setup here. Yeah. That's right. If a snake, if a snake gets out, just catch it for me. Catch it. Pray for me. That's, that's precarious down there. So, uh, I wanted to uh, to do this sermon because I've got a I've got a burden, and uh, it's a really it's it's a really taxing thing for a father. And it's one of the reasons one of the things that uh, me and Jennifer's life changed when we heard some Bible preaching. You want me to put this on? Okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it really changed our life when we got this burden, and this burden is for godly children. And, uh, you know, I pray that all godly families, godly, you know, Bible-believing families, that they don't lose any of their children. And uh, I pray, I thank the Lord for this church and all these families that want to raise their children up for the Lord. And I pray that we don't lose not a one of our children. I want all of them to be saved. And more than that, I want all of them to be living for the Lord, not in the world, but in in church, in church with us, doing things the Lord's way, uh, serving the Lord, and doing things right. And we've got an epidemic today, an epidemic of churches, good godly churches that are just shutting down right and left. And uh, we've got a lot of these non-denominational churches, churches with false doctrines are growing like crazy. Uh, a lot of descendants from good godly people. They had the right Bible, the right gospel, their children are going to these churches. Um, a, lot of, a lot of children from, these, from, from good godly churches have been just doing a 180, turning over. I mean, I've, we've seen documentaries. There's people that have uh, podcasts and YouTube channels, and they're preaching against their families, their parents, godly standards. Their parents laid down a foundation of good, godly things for them to, uh, to be doing and serving the Lord with their life, and they've just done a 180. They're against it. And um, a lot of these worldly churches that these, that these children go to, they're, they're in the church, but they're still in the world. How many think that you can be in a church and still be in the world? It can happen. If it's not the right church, the right church, will it, it'll make you uncomfortable. You have to make some decisions, and you got to get out of the world. So that's what I want to do tonight. I want to make, give, give some of that pressure. I want to uh, help these children make a decision, uh, either the joys of the Lord or the baubles of this world. I want to compare the two. And um, <clears throat> the first point that I want to get into is the deceptiveness of sin, of this world and sin. Uh, I've got a quote here. I don't know who it came from, but sin is a cruel master. It will offer freedom but it will always enslave you in the end. And I want our children to realize that. Sin might look shiny, might look like something good. This world might have things to lure you in, but in the end, it'll always enslave you. Uh, how many people go fishing here? Got some fishermen? Yeah, a little bit of fishermen. Well, we all know what a lure is. And uh, Satan uses that lure. He tosses it in the water and he's trying to get Christians. He's trying to get Christians and non-Christians, anybody in the world that's in the water. And I want to teach our children to get out of the water. Don't even be in there where that lure is going to hit. And the next example I want to bring is this guy right here. <laughs> Hold your breath, everybody. This is <laughs> I've set this thing off one time, and it was, uh, it was traumatic. And you know what? You know what? Satan's traps are traumatic. Satan's traps are shocking. This is a small example of the violence and wickedness that happens in a life when they are tempted 
by, uh, by Satan's traps. And uh, the pleasures of sin are only for a season. And this is a great example. There's a little piece of beef jerky on there, one of the best pieces of food in the world. And, uh, <laughs> and it's there for you to get. And you can get it. And you'll get a piece of beef jerky. But you're going to pay a high price for it. It's going to be painful. It's going to hurt. It's going to hurt your little digits. You won't be able to count to 10 anymore. Uh, in 1 John 2.16, it says, For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. It's not saying that there's good women in the world. It's not saying there's good men that'll make great husbands in the world. It's not saying there's awesome knowledge or wisdom or truth. It's not saying that you'll get self-worth or lasting value from the world. It's saying that you're going to get just vapid wickedness, vapid, you know, uh, worthless stuff in the world and stuff that's going to trap you, that's going to hurt you. Uh, lusts. If you follow your lusts, if you get out in that world and you just follow your lusts, it's not going to give you a good spouse to grow old with and be joyful with. Lust will only bring you sorrow. People that seek to fulfill their lusts, they only end up with shame. You see them in the news all the time. Uh, Proverbs is a great place to go to learn this lesson. It gives us an object lesson of it. In Proverbs 6, 24, it says, to keep, he's saying, I wrote this, to keep thee from the strange woman, from the flattery of the tongue of the strange woman. Lust not after her beauty in, in thine heart, neither let her take thee with her eyelids. For by means of a whorish woman, a man is brought to a piece of bread. There's that shame. And the adulteress will hunt for the precious life. That's a great comparison right there. That's somebody that followed their lusts. If you follow your lusts, to a whorish woman or to a wicked man, ladies, young ladies, you're going to end up with, a, with nothing, a piece of bread. And then you're going to end up searching and hunting for that precious life. Well, guess what that precious life is? That's what we guys have here, right here. That's the, the, the husbands and wives that are together right here. They have a precious life. They're, they're thankful for their spouse. Uh, you'll want a faithful spouse as you grow old. They'll bring you joy. They'll bring you comfort. They'll bring you happiness, stability, peace. Listen, my father's 82 and he's got dementia and he remembers us. But one of the things that brings him the most joy, I can guarantee it's the one thing I've asked him. It's his wife walking in the room. I was helping him up the other day and it's, he's hurting. Oh, I don't think this is going to work. I'm just trying to get him in his chair. And, and my stepmother walks in and he says, oh, everything's going to be okay. Cabela's here. And he goes to the hospital. We're in the emergency room. I'm saying, I ask him because he's just laying there. I'm like, what are you thinking about when I'm going to get to see Cavella again? You know, his wife. So listen, as we grow old, that's a blessing from the Lord having a godly spouse. Pride, the pride of life. This is the stuff that's in the world. Proverbs again in 16, 8, it says, pride goeth before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. It's guaranteeing that Listen, if you're prideful, things aren't going to go good. Pride will not get you the respect that you're seeking. Money, education, houses, cars, riches. In old age, it only brings shame if you don't build it on godly principles. Uh, I don't know. I've been through quite a few of these estate sales, and I've had family members that I've walked through their house after they passed on. And... Uh, if you've ever experienced this, you see the accumulated worth of someone's entire life physically, and it's sad. They're selling things for pennies on the dollar. They can't take that stuff with them. I'm talking nice stuff. You know, it, it, you would think that it's nice until, until you get old and sick, and it means nothing. And Pennies on the dollar, we've walked through it. it. It really illustrates Solomon in Ecclesiastes when it says, all is vanity, because all of that stuff is vanity. But when I compare that to, I've got Christian family members that have passed on, that have lived a faithful life for the Lord, and, the, and go to their funeral. And when you hear a great 
funeral message about someone that served the Lord. It's inspiring. It's, it's awesome. The honor that they receive for a well-lived life, it's, it's more than riches could buy. Uh, and it's truly not their honor. It's the Lord's honor because they use their life to honor the Lord. They were, they were serving the Lord with their life. And the joy that they receive is greater than any of the possessions, anything they could have accumulated over their life. Uh, my aunt, they held up her Bible. She had, she had filled up, her husband said she had filled up three Bibles with prayers about her children. Just seeking the Lord, just filled it up with them. Um, uh, also, uh, another man that had been a faithful member for years at First Baptist, um, I ended up getting his soul winning Bible. They had his soul winning notes in it. Phone numbers, names, all, you know, from years of soul winning. What, what a testimony to a life well lived. You know, things like this are, uh, are the things that are going to last. These are the Lord's things that last for, forever. The pleasures of this world are short lived. Uh, in Hebrews 11.25, it's, it's talking about Moses here. It says, choosing rather to suffer the affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. Listen, sin is pleasurable. No one should lie to you and tell you there's not pleasures in the world, but they're only for a season. I'm, uh, I'm studying for a, a special test in, in, in the trade that I'm in, and uh, we're studying sand and how to make a decision. What is sand? What is dirt? You know, it's, it's really complicated. And, <laughs> and, and they say the way you check if it's sand is you get a, handful of, get a handful of it. If you open your hand and it stays there, then it's dirt. But if you open your hand and it runs through your fingers, it's sand. And listen, that's how sin is. That's how this world is. That's how the pleasures and things that you're going to get from this world are. Uh, it's temporary. It's short-lived. It's vanity. It's vain. It's worthless. It has no meaning. It won't give you lasting joy. And it won't have a lasting value. Uh, don't build your house on the sand. Build your house on the Lord. Now, <clears throat> I've been speaking about the world and the way the world will interact with us, the lust, the pride, the things that affect us. But I'm not even speaking about the guy standing next to you if you go into the world. That's almost the worst part. <clears throat> Whenever you go often, when these Christian kids go off into the world and live this way, they have to deal with liars, cheaters, people that want to use you, people that want to abuse you, people that want to take advantage of you. This is almost the worst part. They're controlled. They're, they're led around by their lusts, their pride. Satan has is, is got them in their traps and has them bitter and angry and want to do the same to you. Uh, thank the Lord God gives us <clears throat> godly standards and convictions that we pass on to our children for them to live by so they are not the, uh, the victim of these people in the world. Satan, these lusts and pride, or the people that are controlled by them. Satan wants to trap you. Satan wants to deceive you. He wants to distract you. He wants to discourage you. He wants to disrespect you. Satan wants to disable you, and eventually, in the end, Satan wants to devour you. He wants to do this to our children, too. And that's what this is. This is so bad, I'm going to have to put some safety equipment on for it. So. <laughs> That's what this is. If When our children, when anyone jumps out into the world and they want to try the, the, the wickedness of this world, they get a taste of what the devil wants to do to you. <laughs> oh, <laughs> it's bad. It's bad this pencil couldn't handle it. You know, <laughs> That would have been our kids. They would only be able to count to nine now. So <laughs> it's bad. And... As exhilarating as that is, people get into the world and get way worse than that. Whole lives, you know, our lives last 70, 80 years. Whole lives ruined, maybe cut short because of Satan. People are tempted by, you know, a, a bobble of this world. But Satan wants to do all these things to you. You know, they all started with D and the end one was devour. Well, God wants to deliver you. He wants to deliver you from Satan. 
in these temptations, in this world. And we want to give this to our children. This is a gift. This is the best gift ever. Uh, in Job 20, verse 5, it says that the triumphing of the wicked is short. The joy of the hypocrite, but for a moment. What wisdom? Short. The wicked are going to triumph for only a short time. The hypocrite, only for a moment. In Ecclesiastes 2, 26, it says, For God giveth to a man that is good in his, uh, in his sight wisdom and knowledge and joy. But the sinner he giveth travail to gather and to heap up that he may give to him that is good before God. Walking through those estate sales, we see people have heaped stuff up and there's people buying it for pennies on the dollar. My point number two. So the first point is the deceptive wickedness of this world. And number two is God's way. The, the joys and the great things of God's way. Uh, back to Hebrews eleven twenty four, it says, By faith, Moses, when he was come to years, ref, refused to, to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing, remember that word choosing, rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season esteeming the reproach of Christ greater riches than the treasures of Egypt. Greater riches. That's what we want our children to have. Greater riches. The treasures of Egypt. Exchange Egypt for the world because Egypt is a picture of the world in this story. For he had respect unto the recompense of the reward. He's talking about God's reward. He respected God's reward. But faith by faith, he forsook Egypt. He forsook the world, not fearing the wrath of the king, for he endured as seeing him who is invisible. That's the Lord. He made a choice. He made a right judgment between the world and the things of God. And he chose the things of God. And what a blessing. And we, this is what I want our children to see, to choose the things of God. And these are the things of God right here, you know? Amen. Yeah. One of the best. It's, like, it's kind of like manna, you know? It's probably, yeah, it's like it's the perfect food here. But it uh, lasts forever, you know, you can just eat it and it keeps you healthy. But, um, <laughs> but this, this, these are the things of God. The, these are free. God gives them to us for free. We can take them. And we don't get our fingers chopped off. It's not a trap. He's going to give them to us. It's good. And he's going to give us even more. And we're going to have joy our whole lives. And it's not a trap. It's not going to hurt us. The joy of the Lord, one of the fruits of the Spirit. The joy of the Lord comes with no sorrow. In Proverbs 10, it says, The blessing of the Lord, it maketh rich, and he addeth no sorrow with it. The joy of the Lord is lasting. In Psalm 1611, it says, Thou wilt show me the path of life in the presence of fullness of joy. At thy right hand, there are pleasures forevermore. The Lord's joy lasts forever. Uh, the joy of the Lord is our strength. In Nehemiah 8 10, it says, For the joy of the Lord is our strength. And the joy of the Lord is contagious. We take it out there. We get people saved, we get them in here, and we show them the right way to live. We show them the way to honor the Lord with our lives, and we show them the benefits of it and the, the drawbacks of not doing it. In 1 Peter 1, 1.8, it says, Yet believing, ye rejoiced with joy unspeakable and full of glory. So the joy of the Lord, all the blessings the Lord gives are right here. We have, we have all the principles to teach our children how to do this. And I want to just emphasize the difference between Satan's traps and God's blessings of joy. There's three ways to learn. And the first is by experience. And a lot of people go all the way through life getting in these guys right here. And they say, and they get to the end and they say, oh, I shouldn't have done this. I shouldn't, I shouldn't have jumped in these traps over and over again. Kept getting my fingers chopped off. I don't got no more fingers. But 
Do, do you kids want to learn by experience? No. Don't waste your whole life just trying to learn one lesson. This, the second way is to learn from seeing others do it. And there, we've got a lot of examples of good lives lived and bad lives ruined. But the third way, and this is the best way to learn, is by, God, by wise, godly counsel. So by counsel, and this is what we have right here. This is what we come here on Sundays to get. And, the, and what a blessing that we can learn from that. And if you can just be wise enough to not learn from experience, and it's okay to learn from examples, but to learn from godly counsel, because we got a whole book of it right here. The book of Proverbs, I mean, it's got like every example you could think of, of how to not ruin your life in the world. Uh, the preaching we get, thankful to Brother Fannin, the preaching we get, that, uh, that the good godly preaching that teach our children and us to not just fall for every wickedness of this world. The wise Christian counselors, people that have lived a life serving the Lord here, thankful for you guys. And uh, the parents of these children, your parents want the best for you. They want you to live a life of honoring God and not getting stuck in Satan's traps your whole life. Uh, <clears throat> no one can make you do what's right. But we can give you the counsel and tell you how to do what's right and what will happen if you don't do it. So my, that's, my, uh, that's my second point. So the first point is the world and it's messed up, yuckiness. And then number two is God's way the joys and the awesomeness of all the things that God will give us. And number three is you got to make a choice. It's time to choose. And uh, in Joshua 24, 15, it says, And if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose you this day whom you will serve. Make a decision. Make the decision, children, and anybody who hasn't made this decision, me and Jennifer were young. We were probably before we were ever married. And we made the decision to do things for the Lord, to live our lives in a way that would honor the Lord. If you make that decision young, you are going to avoid a lot of pain and heartache. You're going to avoid a lot of pitfalls and, and damage that Satan is going to try to do to you. And the rest of that verse at the very end, it says, but as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. I pray that every one of these children in here grow up to say that. You know, I know it's, it's kind of a little cliche to just have it on your door, but I, I love it there because we should all have that in our hearts, whether it's on our door or not. And I pray that all of our children do. We all have this choice to make. Once you're saved, that's the big issue. Our children have to get, be saved. But uh, once we're saved... Are you going to live for the Lord or are you going to live for something else? Sin's pleasures, the world's pleasures, pride, lust, something else, Satan's attacks that are going to just damage you, hurt you, eventually just annihilate you? Or are you going to serve the God that loves you, that made you, that knows, that knows what's best for you, knows how you should live your life and what will give you the most benefits? I hope each person in here, I hope each child in here makes this decision very young, today if they can, and, uh, and makes a decision of how, what they're going to sow in their life. Because whatever you sow in your life early, you're going to reap when you're old yeah. and in the next life. So I pray that, uh, pray that this really affects some people, that they, they uh, draw the two conclusions of you know, this, the blessings here. Versus the, uh, the traps over here of Satan. So, Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you so much for this time to be able to, to preach your word, Lord. I pray that uh, each one of these messages from these men would just affect people to serve you better. Lord, I pray that you be, be with Brother Jake as he brings a message, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, here you go.